Given the immense size that Argentinosaurus would have attained in life, it's really hard to envision anything, even the huge predators of the past, taking down a healthy Argentinosaurus. But a hungry carnivore is never to be overlooked. Enter Giganotosaurus, one of the largest predators to ever stalk the Earth. With a starring role in the upcoming Jurassic World Dominion movie, Giganotosaurus is sure to grow in both fame and stature. But who was the real Giganotosaurus? And most importantly, what was it eating? Giganotosaurus lived 99 to 97 million years ago in what is now present-day Argentina. But could Giganotosaurus or a small pack of them, working in coordinated efforts, take down a full-grown Argentinosaurus? On size alone, a healthy Argentinosaurus had a natural built-in defense. Argentinosaurs can ultimately be viewed as giant walking mountains of muscle and mass. Once these things got started moving, it's honestly hard to imagine anything bringing them to a halt. But it only makes sense that if you have a prey that is that big, that you have a predator big enough to take it down. Lions on the Serengeti in Africa rarely will attempt to take down an elephant, simply by the inherent danger in trying to pull off such a task. Severe crippling injuries and even death can result. Think about the task of trying to bring down prey as awe-inspiringly huge as an Argentinosaurus. The limbs and tails were potentially lethal weapons if swung and stomped and used correctly. Even for a predator as bulky and massive as Giganotosaurus, an encounter with a full-grown Argentinosaurus would have been a very dangerous endeavor. But maybe it's possible on rare occasions that it could have gone the other way. Apex predators are apex predators for a reason, at the very top of the food chain. But we also know that apex predators can be opportunistic, scavenging off other kills, hunting and taking advantage of wounded and sick animals. It makes sense that if Giganotosaurus did hunt Argentinosaurus as prey, then they more than likely clicked off prey that was either sick or injured. This would have been the most realistic, focusing on an animal that was injured or sick and had gotten separated from the safety of the herd. So that still leaves us with the final question. Could Giganotosaurus, or a small pack of them, take down a full-grown Argentinosaurus? Considering that the teeth of Giganotosaurus were flat and serrated, as was characteristic of other Carcharodontosaurids, the teeth would have easily sliced through the flesh of prey if we can picture a herd of Argentinosaurs on the move, moving in great strides across the land, sending up huge plumes of dirt and debris simply by their movement, then maybe it's possible several Giganotosaurs rushed in on the side of one of these towering plant eaters, thus delivering a series of vicious swipes and gashes with their claws, perhaps even latching onto some part of the sauropod and tearing away a huge chunk of flesh with their jaws. As night draws nearer and the huge plant eater has become separated from the safety of the herd, visibly wounded, bleeding, and tired, the hungry pack of Giganotosaurs have been tracking and following it for quite some time. Slowly, they close in on their kill. We may never truly know the relationship between big predatory dinosaurs and even bigger plant-eating sauropods, but using some creativity and imagination, it's fun to imagine how things may have actually transpired and gone down. Thanks for watching.